Long before Rune of the Hidden Realm or Rafik of the Many, Bant players had the Elder Dragon, Arcades Sabbath. Arcades toughness boosting ability was inspired by one of the first ever enchantments printed in Magic, Castle. So it only makes sense that the new and improved Arcades the Strategist is a defensive minded genius as well. Arcades the Strategist has the unique ability to turn creatures with Defender into offensive juggernauts. It's easy to make a comparison to Doran the Siege Tower, but honestly, they're very different commanders. Arcades opens up access to blue, which shouldn't be underestimated. There are a lot of powerful blue Defender creatures and spells. The Strategist only gains advantage from creatures that have Defender, whereas Doran will take any creature with a high toughness. Arcades also has a built-in card draw ability, which greatly increases his power and potential. Conveniently, card draw abilities are also natural catalysts for combos. In spite of their differences, both of these commanders open up the possibility for innovation and unique strategies, which I'm definitely a fan of. One thing's for sure, Elder Dragon Highlander has come a long way since the days of Arcades Sabbath. Strategizing around Arcades abilities depends entirely on who you are as a deck builder. Do you want to beat people down with Wall of Denial and Colossus of Akros? Or use your defender creatures as a way to draw into combo pieces and pull off quick wins? Let's jump in and take a more in-depth look at both of these strategies. We're gonna build the wall, we have no choice. We have no choice. According to my good friend the Gatherer, there are 233 creatures with the keyword ability Defender. So in an effort not to make this video 14 hours long, I'm only going to be covering the Defenders I like the most. There are a surprising amount of Mana Dork Defenders. These aren't your average 1-1 Mana Dork slouches either. These dorks pack a punch with Arcades on the battlefield. Sunscape Familiar is one of my favorite walls. If you keep your mana curve low, most of your defenders will only be one mana to cast. By far, the best defender mana dorks are Overgrown Battlement and Axe Bane Guardian. It's absurd just how much mana these two little cards can make. And here's a nifty trick, with Arcades on the battlefield, Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms are basically 2 mana 4-4 four, four creatures that draw you 2 cards when they enter the battlefield. It's about time cards like Wall of Mulch or Orator of Ojutai get their chance to shine. Even a card like Stalwart Shield Bears that has rarely if ever been used is now suddenly pretty good. Speaking of pretty good, Wall of Denial is basically a 3 mana 8-8 that when it enters the battlefield it draws you a card. Oh and by the way it has Flying and Shroud, no big deal. Maybe you want some defenders that can help you gain life, well there are a few that can help out with that. And while you're busy Wall of Denialing and gaining life, you might as well bounce your opponent's creatures back to their hands or just freeze them in place and prevent them from untapping. And congratulations to all you Wall of Kelp owners out there, it's now officially thanks to Arcades, the most expensive card out of the Homeland set. Put Wall of Kelp and Sprouting Phytohydra together and you can make all your Defender token creating dreams come true. And look at that, Colossus of Akros can actually enter the battlefield and attack without having to be monstrous first, and Tree of Redemption doesn't totally suck anymore? Wow, that's actually kinda cool. You can also use Thing in the Ice as a mini creature board wipe and make your playgroup reconsider why they play magic with you. Don't forget to bring along an extra copy of Wakestone Gargoyle, Assault Formation, or Rolling Stones. Arcades isn't always going to be on the battlefield, I have a hunch he'll be killed a lot. So you're gonna need a way to make those walls do more than just sit there and be walls. Don't forget to look outside of the Defender Tribe as well. Creatures like Tetsuko Umizawa and Soul of the Harvest are perfect here. I also really like spells like Shamanic Revelation, which highly incentivize you to play as many defenders as possible. There's definitely room for a wall tribal route here as well, and if you go down that path, cards like Vanquisher's Banner and Herald's Horn will help you build a wall in no time flat. I'd also strongly recommend cards like Slaughter the Strong, Meekstone, and Dusk Dawn, which will almost exclusively exclusively hurt your opponents while keeping your precious walls intact. You can also go for vigilant reaching walls with banding. I'm not going to get into what banding is because it's complicated and it makes my brain hurt, but 
you should totally go for it. It will definitely irritate your playgroup and make for some serious shenanigans. As hilarious as destroying people with castles and walls and giant plants is, you should probably have a few ways to win. Beastmaster Ascension and Triumph of the Hordes are two of my favorites. You can also put all your opponent's creatures into a vegetative state with the help of Mation the Mind Cage, or better yet, cast all of your walls for free with the help of the expensive but amazing Aluren. There are a ton of combos out there featuring Arcades, but I'm going to highlight my two favorites. Let's start with Enduring Renewal. With Arcades and Enduring Renewal on the battlefield, you can cast Shifting Wall for zero, which will trigger Arcades, allow us to draw a card. Shifting Wall will die because it has zero toughness, which will trigger Enduring Renewal. The Enduring Renewal trigger will return Shifting Wall to our hand, which we can cast over and over again for zero and draw out our entire library. With how Enduring Enduring Renewal is worded, any time we draw a creature card, we don't put it into our hand, it goes into our graveyard. So if we plan on winning through a creature like Labman, we either need to have him in our hand, or have a way to recur him from our graveyard and get him onto the battlefield so we can win by drawing out our library. Remember these two mana dorks from earlier? Well, it turns out they have some serious infinite mana potential, especially if you pair them with an enchantment like Intruder Alarm, Freed from the Real, or Pemmin's Aura. For this example, I'll be using Intruder Alarm, which you'll need on the battlefield alongside one of our mana dorks, preferably Axebane Guardian and our commander to help us draw cards. The key is to have a deck full of low cost defenders, that way we can constantly play them tap and untap the Axebane Guardian to make absurd amounts of mana and draw into even more defenders to cast. You can use extra mana you generate with creatures like Doorkeeper or Walking Archive to mill out your opponents, or better yet, a creature like Wall of Kelp to make an infinite number of wall creature tokens. Overgrown Battlement can be used for very powerful but heavy green cost spells like Genesis Wave, which in conjunction with a haste enabler like Concordant Crossroads means GG for all your opponents when all the walls come tumbling down. There is a lot to love about Arcades the Strategist. He is such a unique commander. It's hard to be disappointed with a 4 mana 3 5 flying vigilant creature with these kind of abilities. Arcades is going to have players casual, competitive, and everywhere in between brewing all sorts of interesting decks around him for years to come and I'm excited to see what people come up with. The main drawback to a Tribal Matters commander like Arcades is that you have to stick to that tribal theme, in this case defenders. If you're not running a lot of defenders in your deck, you're gonna have a hard time. Arcades is the engine that makes this castle fly, and if you can't get him to stick on the battlefield, at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a bunch of do-nothing walls, and you're really not going to have that much fun. Arcades the Strategist earns a solid above average score of 6.5 out of 10. Arcades the Strategist is a fantastic addition to the otherwise undermanned Bant Commander lineup. He brings something new and unique to the Commander format while at the same time remaining true to his lore and original printing, and I for one am a huge fan. Thank you all so much for tuning in today, I appreciate each and every one of you, and you know what's up. Stay classy, deck builders. Yeah, like I'll see you next time. I was listening to dubstep before a lot of you were wearing diapers, alright? Which means before you were born!